I am putting finishing touches on my book that I made. These are all sig they're called signatures. Um, groups of four sheets of paper folded in half. And I have a poem per page, but I'm keeping the page next to each poem blank. And I'm putting a number on that page instead of a number. And no number on the page that has the poem. I'm at the last signature. This is taking a very long time and it's not really fun. But once I start binding, so now this so now this is page 210. And I wrote in pencil the number. And I'm gonna erase it on here. Like so. There's my pencil mark. That's my page number when it prints. And I kind of look at each page to make sure that, you know, this is probably going to be a half inch bind that that appears kind of artistically in the center somehow. Okay, that was the middle. So now you have 210, 212, and this gets erased. Well, that number looks a little high. I'm not really being too perfect about it. There's a page that will be printed with just a page number. So I have this one with the page number on it only. See how it's starting to get all disgusting? Because I think it's the drum. And I have a new drum. I just haven't put it in. Actually, I'm just saying I think it's the drum. I actually think it's that roller next to the next to the shiny roller. I am now sewing my signatures together. <clears throat> and first I have to sew parts of them separately. Each signature again is four pages. Four sheets of paper, eight makes eight pages or 16 pages, but I chose to just print on eight of them. And I made dots dots along here marking. My page is eight and a half <clears throat> inches in height. The center point is four and a quarter inches. I decided to do an inch from the top and an inch from the bottom, which would then leave an inch and a half in two lines, which is actually um, 10 sixteenths, an inch and 10 sixteenths, or 5 eighths from those inch dots. So I have an inch, an inch and a half in two lines, another inch and a half in two lines to meet my center point, another inch and a half in two lines, and then another inch and a half in two lines, and then the last inch. Then as per the directions, I am to sew, now I'm poking a hole, trying to meet, meet that dot. I could poke I could mark lines on the dots on the other side. So now I just made three stupid holes. Now that's four stupid holes. Ah, no, this is that with three stupid holes. Now my fourth hole is successful. Now I have a dot on this side. <laughs> Sometimes I get it the first shot. And I'm gonna sew the first, the top two holes together and the bottom two holes together. So this is my top hole. And then it says to cut. That should have been tighter, but I'm not giving, I'm not caring anymore. Cut the remainder quarter inch. Now I'm gonna go and do the same to the bottom. I'm gonna put my needle in the inch mark. There, I got it in the second try. And then here's my other marker. Right on my scene. They did say I'm supposed to paper clip these pages together, but I kind of already have my crease in there and I know where the, the, the bind should be, so I'm kind of eliminating that paper clipping step. So I have to do this for each of my separate signatures. Now that I have all my signatures individually sewed, now it's time to sew them together. You're supposed to do from the front of the book to the back, it seems, sewing each one together. But the concept is pretty much the same 
wherein you would open this to the center of both. You'd open to the center of this signature and that signature, which is which would be in order, obviously. I mean, if you're doing this, you're not a dunce, and you'd be able to figure it out how to do it um, with what I'm saying. And then you make, and then you um, <clears throat> take a string and you make it nice and long. They say if the book is 10 inches in height, then to make this 20 inches. So I guess that's mine's eight and a half inches in height. Okay, so then you take, um, you open to the center of this one, like I was saying, and then you open to the center of that one, and you put them together. And here I will use the paper clips just because they said to. And one there, one here and one here, just to make things easier. And what you'll do is you'll go through the hole of the first one, through the, through the hole of the second one, and you wanna leave just enough thread, like about that much thread, maybe, because you will be pulling it along. You won't, it won't be that much thread at the end. Then you go through the second one like that, so now you have this loop here. See, this is the first thing. This is the first. Now you have this loop here. Then you will be creating a hole for the third. You will be creating the hole for the third hole. And you want to get it in the center there. In the center. There you go. There I is. Yeah, that kind of pulled a little there. Now you're gonna go through the back of the fourth because you're gonna continue on this side. Through the, through the fifth hole. You kind of want to get it in the hole that was already made and sometimes that's not happening. This is my first time ever doing this so I'm guessing that it should go through that hole, but whatever. I'm having a little difficulty. Now you're gonna. Now we're gonna double back through here. Ah, that turned out good. Now through here. Now through there. And you stop. And you cut. And now you sew this together. I mean, not you sew, you tie this together. Here. So you're, you've woven through and now you're tying the ends together. Can I get this? I'm not good at tying my shoes today. And you'll cut this by a quarter inch. And now you can take out the paper clips. And you have, now you can open. These are the two signatures. See how there's still two signatures? Now they're together. Now I'm going to do these two together. And again, I am going to open to the middle of this, the middle of this last signature, and the middle of this first signature. And I will repeat that whole action until they're together here and until. The whole book is together. Now we have all the signatures bound, but they kind of flop like this. So, yeah, it's shifting. The only thing I can think of uh, that I didn't do, which I should have done, which the direction said to do, was to make sure the knots were, uh, of each signature, signature binding, the knots were on the outside here, not on the inside like I did, because when you flip through, you might see this, even though it might be covered, some of these knots, the strings might be showing. So that's the only thing I didn't do. I don't know why. So the next thing they say to do is make tapes, which helps uh, with the strength of the book. And I already made one and put one in here. It was kind of like a pain to get underneath there, but I did it. These are four and a half inches wide, and then the width of however long these strings are. 
and it is kind of a pain to get this needle under here under each string but I'm gonna do it now and that's and that's sometimes it's easier to get the needle to get a stiff piece of paper underneath oh this one's really being a pain here if I get it I think I finally got it so that goes all underneath here actually messed up that's why it, it's act, it actually went under easier than it what it would be because I messed up and had to redo the, the, the size of this paper again because then they say to fold this in half mark the center point so that the center fold mark is actually in the center of all this so that should get under there like that and I think I did it I hope I did it and then that fold mark goes to the center so these are now tapes and then the next thing we're going to work on is I'm going to work on the next thing I'm going to work on is the mull and the mull will go over these tapes it's four and a half inches wide and it's as long as from the top of this thread bind to the bottom of the bottom thread bind and that's going to go over here like this and that's what I'm going to prepare to work on next to show you this is a piece of scrap paper they say to put here and then they say to put masking tape I don't have masking tape so I'm going to use this medical tape and you, and you press this down you attach those to the little tapes to the scrap paper one half then you rubber cement the top part of the tapes The tapes and the mull can be made of cloth or paper, but the, they said the cloth should be stiff. And the both the tapes and the mull should be made of the same thing. So if you're making it out of a stiff cloth, then so should the molding. And then you're also supposed to rubber cement. What does it say? One half? No, the whole the whole spine. I think it's the whole spine between, you're supposed to rubber cement the whole spine between the top of the one signature and the bottom of the other signature area, the signature area. That's what I'm going to do. Rubber cement all this. I really don't know how this is going to turn out, especially because these signatures look quite loose. Like, they're not pressed down yet, so I have no idea. This is my first book. Spread rubber cement all over inside of surface mold. This is the inside surface of my mold. I kind of marked on my mold the top area of this thing. I like being, I like measuring and making sure things are well measured. And I guess I press that down. What the heck do they say to do? Let me refer back to the book. It says cover top sheet. Um, press top half of mold flat onto glued binding tapes. Okay. Remove. Now remove the binding tapes. No, remove the scrap paper. And they also said to remove the binding tapes, even if it's underneath a little. And they said to tear it off, but maybe I could just go like this. I could sneak it underneath. And then I'll I guess I'll turn over and do it on the other side. A lot of instructional a lot of instructional manuals. Now, hold on. Why is this all sticky in here? Oh well. I guess I will just unstick this piece of scrap paper. 
this this is not supposed to stick to here. You, I removed the scrap paper, I flipped the book over and did it the other side. You basically want your tape to be stuck to your mole. And then you kind of press this into the bind. I still don't understand because this, this looks like it could be squished in more here. And there's a lot of room, so I don't know what's gonna happen, but now I have the mole attached to the bind. And this is sticky because of the paper, but now I'm supposed to work on the cover. And now I have to determine the size of the cover. It's supposed to look like that. And the size of the cover will be slightly larger than the size of the book to protect the little edges. Now it's time to make the cover. And I've decided to use an old uh, postage, an old postal cardboard envelope. And I'm gonna keep it in like this. I'm gonna keep it like this. This is the thickness. And measure the thickness of these two boards together, front and back cover. And these are about 2 sixteenths of an inch in width. So that's 1 eighth of an inch. So you, you minus that, you subtract 2 sixteenths, but I made it 3 sixteenths because that's what they said. From the width of the cover, and I'm measuring the end paper here, so you take from what you're subtracting here, this is confusing, but whatever, it's not that hard. And then you add an eighth of an inch for the cover to bleed over to protect the pages. And then that is the width of your cover. So I made two covers, front and back. Then you have to make the spine. So they said to take this whole book with the moles and then put a rubber band around this like so so that's nice and flat all around and then you pinch this with the two covers oh one cover was supposed to be in the back yeah, one cover supposed to be in the back and you pinch this really tightly to figure out the width of the spine they say to take a piece of paper and wrap it around them. This again is the moles being all crinkled because they didn't give any directions regarding how how to flatten the the, uh, the spine and all the pages. And then you're supposed to measure, including the covers, the width of this spine, including the covers. And then you you press this around, and then you mark it with a pencil like I did with these two markers. And I actually made it slightly smaller. It was here, and then I made it slightly smaller. And then you're supposed to measure that. The width of that, which is um, three quarters of an inch, becomes the width of the spine, which I already made. So now we have front and back cover plus the spine. And the next step is to make a what, is, what do they call this here? A paperboard cover? Cover paper. So that's the next step. According to these directions, they say that these covers, I forgot to mention, should be made out of illustration or matte board. So now I'm gonna make the cover. And I already cut out the paper. I decided to use some old wrapping paper. This is National Wildlife Federation. Their, their wrapping paper seemed to be some, some pretty thick, thick enough for me. So they said to um, mark, mark the pa to, to determine the size of this paper, uh, you, you, you lay your backboard, spine, and front board down, and uh, the space between the spine and the backboard should be the width of two pieces of your board. So I'm putting that here and then you space it like this. Now this is before you cut out the paper, which I already did. And you want three quarters of an inch at the top and three quarters of an inch at the bottom and three quarters of an inch from the right side. And they said it didn't matter how much you had here. So I drew guidelines. I actually messed up and thought that it should, this whole thing should be centered, but it should be three quarters of an inch from this side. <clears throat> because then you can just cut off the excess, apparently. I thought I was gonna do something, uh, something all measurement-wise, neat and precise, but that's not the case because 
we're going to cut off these I'm going to cut off these corners here and they have to be at nice right angles. So, now I glue. Where's my glue? Now I glue. Oh, and by the way, I feel that the book before applying this what is this called again? <laughs> the tape and the it's something else. Okay, the the mull. Yeah, I think it's called a mull. <clears throat> it's called the mull. Um, that this should have been rubber banded down because this is, has all this puffiness in here and now this is getting all ugly like it's rising up like waves so if, if a rubber band was put here and, a, and put here not in the way of this mull and the gluing process at least this area would may have been slightly tighter but who knows what's going to happen if they if they had if they already had in mind that it was going to be okay because now this is all nice and attached and I have that glued and so now this is what I'm going to do. I am going to put, it says, uh, spread some rubber cement on the board and on the paper. Press board into, onto paper. How exciting. <sighs> I'm going to put that there and on wrong side of paper. I probably should have, um, actually this two board little measurer, they said could have been done a while ago. I was trying to, I, I always try to get away with what I think I can get away with, not doing the minimal. I minimalize and sometimes that's not good. Let me see what I can get away with. All right, so I'm gonna press this down again. This is three quarters of an inch from the top. They said for a larger book, you might need larger, a larger uh, width this way. So just be prepared to do something like that. Now I'm gonna take my two-piece measurer. I figured it's about uh, two sixteenths of an inch. That's what I did. Instead of making this thing, which I made after the fact, this measures to about two sixteenths of an inch here and there, so and that's why I didn't do it. I'd rather measure than deal with that little board thing because it doesn't make sense to me to constantly put the little board thing down instead of knowing you can just take a ruler and make an exact measurement. And they say on the flip is a lot of this. You need that space to make this nice little hinge, which is what's going to make the book look really um, like a real book. Like, wow, this is a real book. See, I use, I'd rather, instead of using that board, I'd rather just use my thing here, my ruler. This over here would be whatever's on this side. This is three quarters of an inch and two lines. Three quarters of an inch and two lines. So I'll just mark that now. So I'll know that this has to be cut off. Now I'm going to cut the corners. This is so that when it folds in, it makes a nice little edge. And I already, you see, this is why I don't like this thing. But because if you put this down like this, you don't know at what angle you're doing this. So it might take some trial and error just to make this line s s proportionate so that it's a nice line. And I figured already, see all the lines I made? That this was supposed to be an inch and a half. I guess three quarters and three quarters is an inch and a half. 
that comes off. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. My man's got some good ideas. <laughs> I made that up yesterday. That's what I was thinking of. Did you like that? You could just take the corner that you cut off instead of measure, measure. Group effort. This is. I'm someone that, that would sit here and reinvent the wheel. Obviously not with this though. I went to the library and got my book out. There's so many books of book binding in the library. It's so pathetic. I like how to write a book. Well, if, if you're gonna bind a book and it's gonna be your own book, you might as well already know how to write one. Okay, so now it says, put rubber cement on all the edges of the cover paper which stick out beyond the boards. Oh, okay. Sometimes I'm glad that this is so pathetically explanatory. It's like book binding for boneheads. So now, at head and foot edges of spine. Okay, let me just get this in. And it also put, it says on your board too, three quarters of an inch. So I don't have to measure that. If I get a little over three quarters of an inch, whatever. What's great about rubber cement is that you could just rub it off. And I think it really does make a difference to have the rubber cement <laughs> on both sides. It makes it like extra sticky or something. Do this and this, top and bottom first. I hope these edges come in good. I don't even come in well. I've never done this before. I hope my inch and a half marker doesn't look like it's working so much for some reason. For some reason, tis treason. I don't know why. Oh well. It's a new experience. It's the, the, these edges are not as neat as I'd want them to be. These corners, I have to figure out why. I have to do the math. My hair is falling out. As to why these corners are not as precise. But that looks really good, doesn't it? Does that look really good? Almost looks like a real book. Now I'm gluing the spine, putting, applying glue to the spine edge and all along the mole. Yeah, all over the, the entire spine, not just the mole. Okay, now this must line up perfectly or the book will be on a slant for some reason. I don't know what that eighth of an inch was. I don't find that this was an eighth of an inch larger. Okay, I'm lining up my book here. I guess it's got to be. This has to be centered perfectly. Now you can close your book and keep pressing down. Obviously, this is my first book. 
and I it looks like I didn't allow enough uh, book cover space. The pages are almost extending beyond beyond the um, the covers. So I'm pushing down, pushing down. But look, it looks like a real book. The front, the top and bottom look good. And I didn't have to. I really didn't have to worry about. Um, what angle I put the book in at. I mean, what, um, it was upside down when I put it in, but it didn't matter because you just turned the book around. Now it says, close book and set it on table with front cover up. Open cover is shown and gently with a bouncing motion, push down. I don't know, there we go. Now we're gonna get an edge here. That wasn't good, was it? Until you see a narrow folded hinge up here. Of course, I find a different way to do things. Didn't say let it dry, but it should have dried. Now, this edge, for some reason, doesn't feel like it's dry enough to be doing this process, this, this part of the whole process. The book is still coming apart here. Now we have a kit. Oh, the mold was not supposed to be rubber cemented yet, you see? Now it's saying to rubber cement. And it says to put a book underneath this. Well, this one's rubber cemented down. Probably not good enough, but whatever. Use plenty of cement to have a strong binding. Maybe my idea of overcompensating or undercompensating for the width of the spine because I really wanted this book compressed was not good. I just spread some rubber cement all over the back cover and this end paper right here. And now it says to hold the book at a right angle and press the end paper down. And they said it, there should be an eighth of an inch beyond the end paper with the cover of the book. And why does this look like it's at an angle here? I don't know. That's kind of upsetting for me. It wasn't at an angle before. I know why. Because this is really stuck in there. Let me see if I can... This is a mess. This is my first book experience and it's a mess. Now I just picked up the mole. So now I have to... <laughs> I have to put this back down again. Mine will be a library book that comes apart at the library. Now everything's coming apart, but I'd rather take it apart now and then glue it all back down. Now it's straighter. I don't know why they just don't have people do the mull and all that at the same time, because that's what I actually ended up doing. Now it's straighter in there. You get to see the real deal. Maybe you'll run into the same problems that I just had and You'll know what that looks like because I'm filming it. I'm not showing you the El Perfecto Bravo part of book binding. Now I'll do the same for the back. And then after this step, book binding shall be complete. That's what it says. Except for the dust jacket which if you got through the measurements of this series of events here, then a dust jacket should be no problem to make. And this is my end paper, so I'm gonna spread. It says to put a piece of wax paper under here so as not to get rubber cement all over the other pages. But here I am again, skipping steps because I'm a corner cutter. Let's see how this turns out now. This doesn't look like there's enough cement in the spine here, so I'm just going to glue some, just block some glue in there. And 
this should be up on its edge like this. I'm gonna press the spine in, this annoying, expanding spine of my book for some reason. But look, it's it's pretty it's pretty even on this side. Let's see. There is there might be an eighth. It's an eighth. It's an eighth up there, but not down here. I'm running into the same problem down here, so Let's see if I pick this up on this side. Yeah, there it is. Oh well. It's not the perfect book, but guess what? It looks like a freaking book. A real book. This I'm not happy with, but I'll just know my book cover needs to be slightly larger. And I can open my book. That's upside down. Look. My steaks are rare. Put up your dukes. You ain't in the ring with no pork chop. That's the title of my book. I didn't have an I didn't have another paper here. It just starts. 200 pages of mind warpy stuff. <laughs> presentation time. I decided to put my wig on for this because it's presentation time. So here's my book. Uh, what I did instead of a dust jacket, I decided to forego that because I realized I could just rubber cement a cover on top of the cover. Um, so that's what I did. And I put my spine there like this. And then I actually put another piece of paper on the back cover. Now, if I were to do this again, which I will be doing again, right before I put in these, glued down these uh, end papers, I would have taken that eight and a half by 14 sheet of paper, glued it on, and tucked the ends of those underneath this end paper. That's what I'm gonna do next so that these edges here, these are all separate pieces of paper glued on. And the other thing I would do is when I was measuring the distance for this spine here, I would actually measure it on this side because this, is, this makes you think that it's wider than what it really is and you end up with a book that's, the spine is a little larger here than this side. So that's the only thing I would do. And then of course, uh, Professional binders, they use this guillotine. You may have seen other videos on YouTube that cuts through all these pages. My pages are all uneven. I would have to go back and recut them all. But I don't know if I'm going to do that. Not for this book anyway. So that's my book. My steaks are rare. Put up your dukes. You eat no ring with no pork chop.